Welcome to another quick learning. Today we're going back to CodeSignal. We're working on the Python coding exercises. If you're joining this in the middle of a playlist, I'll put a link in the description below so you can start from the beginning if you wish. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to the arcade, going to Python, and then we're in the section here, yin and yang of yields, number 71, range float. Uh, so we have to implement where the ellipsis is here. All you may know as and you may know the range function in Python allows coders to iterate over elements from start to stop with a given step. Unfortunately, it works only for integer values, and additional libraries should be used if a programmer wants to use float values. Code signal doesn't include third-party libraries, so you have to make do with the standard ones given an array of arguments args, uh, return array of values the float range generator should return. All right, so let's expand this a little bit. So with uh, the regular range, if you just supply one argument, what it will do is it'll start by default at zero, and it'll go up to uh, the stop argument that you put in, not including it. So zero to four, not including the last number, which is five. And then if you specify two arguments, the first one becomes the start argument, and the last one becomes a stop argument, not inclusive. Uh, so you start with 0.5, and then you end with a number just before this. And if you don't put in the step, then it automatically is one by default. So then if you put in all three arguments, then this is the start, this is the stop, and this is what's gonna step uh, up each time. So you can see here it starts with negative 1.1, adds 0.3 to negative 0.8, and then 0.3 again until it gets to, as you can see, 2.2 here. Then if it added 0.3, it would be 2.5, which would be more than 2.4, uh, so it's not included. So how can we implement something like this? Well, they've already generated most of the code for us. Uh, so you can see they've defined a class here. So this is object-oriented programming. And then we have this special uh, function here. When you have these two underscores, you can tell it's a special function of the class. And this is the INIT, which is the initialization function. So when this uh, class object is initialized, this code is gonna run. And then we've got three variables that we are putting into it. Uh, the first is the start, although if there's only one, you're gonna see that it's actually the stop variable, even though it's called start. And then we have two, fun two starry variables, and we've also defined a, a default for them. So when you have this equals uh, something, that means that's what it's gonna be that default if it's not specified. So here, if the stop is not specified, so there's only one argument given when the class is initialized, then uh, the i is going to be zero, so it's going to default the start to zero. The stop is going to be actually this variable that is, that is given, and it's going to step by one by default. If the step is not given, then it's going to start with the first variable you give it. It's going to stop with the second variable you give it, and it's going to step by one. And the last one, it's going to start, stop, and step by whatever uh, variables you give it. All right, so this just defines that uh, there's going to be an iteration object, and this uh, special function here called next is going to tell you how you step through that iteration. So if the step is greater than zero, meaning that it's going up, and the i is less than stop, uh, that means that it has room to actually go, go up, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep increasing i by step, and we're gonna return i minus step because we first wanna return the value of the previous i, so we have to undo the step that we added previously. And then there's also the chance that we're gonna start, we're gonna have a step that is negative and in that case, the start actually has to be higher than the stop, or you won't generate any numbers. 
So to give you an example of this, so let's say we initialize this, let's F range, and we gave it, let's say, three, zero, negative one. So we're gonna step down by negative one each time. So the start has to be higher than the end. So then this would generate Uh, a list where you start off with three, you go two, you go one, and then it would stop because the next number would be zero, uh, which would be the stop, and you don't include the stop. So that's what would be generated there. All right, and then once it gets to the end, then we want to stop the iteration, so it just raises the stop iteration. All right, so if we go ahead and run that, this just run, creates a list from that, that F range object, and you can see it works as expected. Uh, so those are the examples they gave over there. This is, you can see the start is uh, higher than the stop, and because there's no step, it's trying to step up, but you can't from there to there without including anything. So. It's empty, uh, it's, and here you can see, again, this is greater than this. Remember, the lower the magnitude of a negative means it's less. Let's see, another example, minus four. All right, so you get the idea. So hopefully you guys are able to follow along with that, and you'll join me for future videos. Thank you very much.